something that's very uh, personal to me. And um, over the past couple of broadcasts, we talked about, um, you know, um, my first one is, or rather, never mind, sorry, my I did not do the first one for Twitch. I did that through Audacity, and then I recorded that. And um, I was all right. And then um, second podcast about the, um, uh, you know, the Punisher and the edgy superheroes. Um, that was, a, you know, um, uh, I broadcast that on Twitch and I, you know, I think it went well. And then um, subsequently I've been broadcasting all my podcasts uh, recently through, um, gosh, what's it called? Through on um, Twitch. So same thing, Podcast 02 um, or 002. Um, the Punisher podcast zero zero three. Um, you know, kind of just looking at how, why, or how ridiculous the um, the yellow lightsaber topic is, and um, podcast zero zero four um, about uh, edgy um, superheroes, but for um, but for DC, we only talked about Marvel in the first one, and for this one. Um, even though I mentioned, um, uh, gosh, what's it called? Um, some positive aspects that I cared about in each, in all three of those, or all four of those, um, podcasts, or, um, subjects, I, I needed to work on this a little bit more, so sorry if it took, um, uh, I, I mean, I met, I, um, again, like, um, uh, gosh, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to collect my thoughts, um, or I'm trying to collect my thoughts, and, um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try and think it out the best possible way. Okay, I think I, I, um, I, uh, I brought it up, because, um, Um, okay. Sorry, this is just, uh, trying to, this is taking me a while to, um, uh, bring this up. Um, actually, before, um, uh, before I say it, I would say, um, again, um, I guess for one shout out, it would be, um, again, if you haven't, um, checked out this petition yet, it's, you know, I don't like Overwatch, but again, this is a wonderful petition, and it'd be cool if this, um, guy's, um, uh, um, illustration slash skins made into a game. So if you wanted to check that out, um, it's all good. Um, anyway, um, before we get to, um, oops, wrong one. Um, before we get to the whole, you know, um, everything about that, I wanted to say, um, I, yes, I brought up, um, um, characters or, characters or concepts in each of those ones that I cared about. And again, this is something, um, at least for Podcast 005, that I, um, immensely care about. And, um, some of the stuff that I, um, do care, or that I have said I cared about in the, um, those will probably have a future date, but I'm I'm not sure yet. I just I still have to think about it. So, um, with this time, um, um, if you ever heard of these games, um, it started with the first one, Os. Um, hang on. Let me bring up the uh, oops, the sheet. But yeah, if you ever um, if you ever heard of those games, the first game in the series was uh, Os Tak Tak A Owen Don, and they were rhythm games where um, you use a stylus to tap on the screen when uh, the outer circle envelops the or you know uh, uh, the inner circle and. It, uh, 
then you when you uh use a stylus there you get um points or whatever and that's what the game consisted of um and then it was put to um stylish songs or at least um it's hard to tell from japan to america to japan but um but um anyway um a Windon was the uh, first, um, or Oss was the first um, in the series of these rhythm games developed by Inus. And then Elite Beat Agents came out um, either two or one, two years later. And um, it was about the same concept, but, um, and I think the image is right here. Uh, same concept or same concept, but um, with American ideas. Like instead of the cheerleaders um, promoted in the first one, they are American Secret Service agents, like uh, Men in Black. So that's what they're going for in the second game in the series. And um, and then they continue with that uh, trend with uh, songs from America, like. Like Highway Star, um, Skater Boy, and David Bowie's Let's Dance. So, and then the third game is uh, there's a there's a lot of accomplished or not accomplished uh, complicated words before um, uh, the secondary title. I think it's like something like Moro. Um, Niket's Damashi or uh, Niket's Rhythm Damashi then I I don't remember next but then it goes then it's the Os Tatake Owindan and then I I think with um, Os Tatake Owindan or Owindan it roughly translates to Go Cheer Squad so that's kind of the um, short and uh, the uh, translated directly I don't know if it's translated perfectly because I know it's like a lot of stuff doesn't translate perfectly to English but um, it's I think you know it's it's okay um, so before we go any further and I'm sorry I, I was I, I wanted to start off the segment with this story because it was very important to me and I I wrote it down too because like I was saying I wanted to have more like production values and I know that there's a lot of you know uh, empty space on that picture but I just um, I was trying to uh, making it so that um, you know get a get a you know brief idea of what the games are and what the uh, um, and what they you know promote um, but anyway a uh, personal story and this one's very close to me um, uh, when I first learned about uh, Elite Beat Agents it was a uh, you know a, a, a revelation um, it was near the end of eighth grade and we were on a field trip to the Museum of Tolerance I sat next to one of my best friends who had a DS with two games New Super Mario Bros and elite beat agents. When I saw the game, it was such a magical, ethereal experience. Uh, and then my and I, you know, I asked him a lot of questions about it. Um, you know, and he told me everything about the game. Um, he told me about the extra difficulties. He told me the uh, elite beat divas. Um, and that's another thing we'll, that we'll talk about later. Um, just you know everything about the game. And I would, you know, it was just amazing. I eventually um, tried the game, and um, I was really awful at it. I didn't understand how to play the game, but I was really, I was really happy with that. What the game was, or what the game, you know, um, promoted, you know, or what the game was. Um, you know what the game was about so um so after, so 
So after the after the field trip, and um, for the next two to three and a half years, I begged my friend to play the game again until I got my own DS. And then, then after that, um, I I begged another one of our uh, mutual friends if I could borrow their copy because um, um, I begged my friend a lot to or the my my initial best friend or um, one of my best friends to see if I could get their copy and maybe their DS as well to just you know borrow it for a while to play it and that never happened but that's fine and then I asked our mutual friend when I got my DS if I could have you know or borrow their copy and um, they never had a chance they or they I don't think they ever they probably always forgot to ask, but that's fine. Um, and then um, another half year later, my brother went and uh, bought it for me, and I was, and I was really, um, I was really, uh, I was really happy for, for a while. I, I played it so much, it um, I annoyed my brother and um, my friends as well. So I just, um, it was really something that. That was very, um, you know, special to me. And, um, and then it kind of ends there almost, unfortunately, with a sad note, because, um, at, at the end of high school, I lost my DS, and at first, you know, I'm kind of going like, you know, well, easy come, easy go, type mentality, try and, um, uh, try and, like, go that way, but... Unfortunately, you know, that was just it. Um, I couldn't um, go ahead and do that because um, I was I was really upset and I think, you know, I was just hiding my feelings. So, um, so yeah, I lost I lost the DS. Um, it was a Crimson DS, um, a carrying case, and four games. Um, and the games in question were New Super Mario Bros., um, Super Mario 64 DS, um, Custom Robo, sorry, I don't remember the subtitle, but the one for the DS, and Elite Beat Agents, so I was, I was truly, uh, I was truly upset that, um, I lost my DS, and, um, unfortunately, uh, that's where, you know, the story kind of begins and ends, so. Um, anyway, other than that, I, um... I want to talk about, you know, us, Tatake Owendon, and Elite BJ Agents, because, um, the games are really important to me, and, um, I wanted to say a couple things as well before we continue, and, um, one is, uh, I, something I never knew from watching, um, you know, um, uh, X-Play with, you know, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. But I watched a video, a review from them, you know, some time ago when it was released. And Adam Sessler said it was, um, one of the core features about the game is that they had a lot of tacky songs. And at first I was kind of, I was kind of offended at that, but I'm kind of going like, oh, yeah, you're right. They, I think Adam Sessler's exact words, like they went to you know, the bargain bin at a Tower 40, or Tower Records, um, uh, you know, uh, and then, you know, they just got what they want, you know, what they want, like, you know, um, basically songs that were more or less in the public domain. Um, or, you know, that idea of that the song was out there for so long that it's basically almost like public domain status. Um, but I kind of understand that, that, you know, if you want, if you were playing a rhythm game that you want to hear songs that you don't, haven't heard exactly, or, you know, good songs that you do like, but I, but at the same time, I kind of, I almost challenge that idea of not, you know, not to be rude or mean to Adam Sessler himself, but I, I, I like to kind of challenge that idea, um, because although, despite some of the songs, you know, being so you know, uh, gosh, what's the word, um, colloquial, or, you know, um, being so ever-present in the modern society, I, um, you know, 
people would know the song they could follow the stage better they could follow the you know the game better so that's one side of it so unfortunately if, if the song has been you know too much you know airtime or whatever that's you know that's neither here nor there or you know that's that's the problem but at the same time if you know the song you know heart um or you know um a lyric for a lyric note for note then you know then you could follow the stage better so i think that was um something explicitly or i think they kind of knew going forward and also the fact that a uh that they wanted to um maybe maybe not pay a lot for your song so it was kind of a you know hit and miss thing um another um really um cool features about the games too were um uh there are three difficulty settings and in the case of the first game os okay a wind on i'm sorry that's gonna get probably old real fast um uh the first difficulty is and i consistently forget about this but in i think in, um, in japan um there's only three years of high school and the first difficulty easy it was reserved for the first year student i'm sorry i can't i i know the names of the leap beat agents um more so than um than the uh the awindon members so so bear with me um so the first year is a guy with a headband and his head sh uh somewhat shaved and so he represents the easy difficulty and um he's uh the first year or the first um you know to be represented the second year and both of these difficulties are at the be um at the start of the game um uh ryota ipongi the guy on the cover i think he's right around here or in the middle over there he's on the cover and um he represents a middle difficulty he's a second year student and he and his other um squad mates over there the guy with the eye patch and the guy with the mohawk um they're the cheer squad for the first game and then after you beat the medium difficulty with ryota you unlock the third year student which he has like a captain's hat and he has the captain of the squad or the captain of the uh, male cheerleaders so and he has like a wicked beard from what i remember so um or from what i i've i've seen um but again uh and then the fourth difficulty is is actually ex um extraordinary because um uh it's reserved for the women characters so that's one of the um uh positive things that is from this franchise is that the the top tier uh the top tier difficulty is always reserved for the women characters and that's i think that's saying a lot because um you know that's um i think it's really cool um so i can't remember i from looking at the um the Owen Don slash Elite Beat Agent Wiki, which there's, there's need to be, there needs to be more work put into that, fellas. If you, you know, um, there's some pictures, there's a lot of pictures for, you know, the, for all the cheer squad members and all that, but again, there's not, um, pictures for the, um, the people that you, you help out in the, uh, each quest or stage or with the music. So that needs to be definitely improved upon. Um, but I think the, um, the main cheerleader for the highest difficulty, I think her name is Sayaka or something like that. So I could be wrong. Um, correct me if you will. And, um, and, um, and then when you go to, um, elite beat agents and again, the same thing, agent spin, um, he's kind of, uh, has a shaved head again and he has headphones on and, uh, sunglasses which is, I think everybody has sunglasses on in the, um, for the Leap 8 agents. Agent Spin is, represents the e easy difficulty, or I think, um, Breezin or Cruisin, I don't remember. Um, and, and I just did a quick 
look through because I couldn't remember the the supporting agents and I'm sorry I couldn't I couldn't get them in time there in the middle. Um I think they're Derek and Morris, the one with the red afro and the one with the kind of like fedora slash bowler hat. I'm sorry, I can't remember who is who. I would have to look again, so um and then Agent J with the um orange like pompadour he he represents a middle difficulty and then uh uh or cruising and then uh for the third difficulty is another agent named chieftain and he's kind of in the same way with owen don he has um he has almost like a cowboy hat kind of and he has another wicked beard so maybe that's a trend among the the higher difficulty guys, except for a wind on too. So, um, and then, and then the, uh, again, the, um, fourth difficulty, uh, is reserved for, um, the elite beat divas. So again, um, they continue at that again in, uh, wind on too. So it's a really cool, uh, uh, idea or a really cool, um, thing that happens in the games. Um, and then, uh, for Il Wind on 2, they have these guys in blue or whatever, and I'm sorry, I can't remember, um, any of the guys' names, but again, there's, uh, that blonde-haired guy in the middle right there, he's, represents the medium difficulty, I don't remember the easy difficulty guy, but I kind of remember the the third difficulty or highest or the um uh the third difficulty guy is he kind of has like I think heavy eyebrows and he has like um gosh um he has a pretty normal haircut it's it's kind of long I think it has curls at the end I don't remember but um. Ah, oh, gosh. But he doesn't have a beard, I remember. He he doesn't have a beard, and that's something that sets him apart from the other uh, Owen Don team. Um, but yeah, and then again, um, with the blue team's uh, uh, side, they have a... Uh, they have the women again. It's kind of, it's kind of funny that um, for the Winden team one or when Don team one, they have, uh, the cheerleaders are in blue, but also, but on, uh, when Don team two, the cheerleaders on red. So they kind of invert uh, in, you know, invert the colors. So it's, it's a, it's a kind of a funny thing. Um, so sorry. I, t I know I talked a lot of, a lot about the semantics of the game and we haven't even talked or gotten to the song yet. So, um, so let's, you know, let's get to the songs. Um, so I'm going to drop this picture, close please, and then bring up this picture. Um, for this picture right there, um, I, when I, when I source these pictures, IGN did not have, um, did not have like too many pictures, like they, they chose um uh, like they they had one for the um gosh what's it called for the first stage which is asian kung fu generation with uh cover with all the songs are covered except for some from what i remember um and i th i think it's like there's only the two songs and i think a uh, wind on two that are not covered for, i think for some reason so anyway um so the first stage is uh either a college or high school student that's doing his exams to be accepted probably into the college not you know so um but uh and so the a wind on the cheer squad they arrive to help him out it's a very uh great um uh start off story the song's kind of slow but other than that um uh, it's it's still a great area to, to start off with. Um, I don't, I since I've only played a wind on once, twice maybe three times. 
um, and the wind on two kind of sorry even less but I know I, I know at least a little bit about the music or I know um, about the stages of music uh, melody I, I would say the melody with the uh, the uh, the festival cart because if I remember correctly it's like uh, Matsuri, I think, is just means festival. So if you said Matsuri festival, I think you're saying a, uh, you know, um, I can't think of the word. Um, something that doesn't make sense. Um, but, um, uh, I think Melody is a good stage. Um, with again the, uh, with the festival cart. And then, the ramen shop has i think a great stage as well um albeit or it's it's an okay stage i think be, mostly because the song is a something called linda linda and it's semi-annoying song because again the word linda linda will get stuck in your head as a as a um you know like an earworm song like you know um smash mouse all-star or bare naked ladies um one week or something like that it's it's you know it's something annoying and catchy and you know will get get stuck in your head so so i think i i like to point out the ramen shop slash linda linda so sorry that's not one of these stages right here because again like um ign slash i think um either digital spy or uh, game spy was are what's with the pictures are are watermarked um they they did not have too many pictures of each. They had a ton of pictures for for elite BA agents, but it was only two stages, which I don't understand. But we'll we'll get to that. Or sorry, it they only had pictures of I think Material Girl and of the second stage from Elite Beat Agents makes no difference. So um uh but anyway, continuing for a wind on or a wind on one is. Wind on one, we have, uh, or, I mean, uh, sorry, I'm just, I lost my track, um, but that's perfectly fine. Um, oh, I think, uh, the instructor with the high school students is an okay stage. Uh, I think this, uh, I know I'm, I'm probably gonna mess up the song name a lot, but I think the song is called, uh, Atsuki. Kodo no Hate, and um, it's a pretty pretty salt. I think a pretty okay song. Um, they have a sad stage, from what I remember from each um, a wind on and elite beat agents. But for a wind on, I I don't think that merits talking about honestly, because. Um, it's like um the sad stage is like this guy who's about to go to heaven but then he wants to like reconnect with his you know significant other or not a husband sorry like a guy and um but anyway it's like it's it's weird the songs iffy i know i'm sorry if i'm angering the fans of that stage but i just um it's it's about lukewarm for, and it's not a super, uh, you know, annoying song or, you know, annoying stage. It's okay, but, um, you know, there's, there's better stages, especially in Elite Beat Agent Slash or Wind On 2. So, um, the next significant song is, um, something that they'll repeat in Elite Beat Agency, Violinist, with a song called One Night Carnival. Um, that one's pretty solid. Um... And then, uh, probably the, uh, pen penultimate stage slash song for the game is, um, is the song, uh, by, uh, gosh, I, I haven't spoke French for a while. Uh, Lark, L Lark on C Cell, or C C Lark on C with uh which is a japanese group with the french word for rainbow and it's their song ready steady go which is um not just for this game but it's also for the i think the one of the intros to uh full metal alchemist and it's a great song and stage because um everybody you helped along the way 
and the Wind on Cheer Squad, um, they're combining their injury, and they help or they and the um, world's energy as well, not just Japan but the world's America and China and France. They supply their energy because they need to blast a meteor that's coming out of the um, space that's ready to smash into Earth. So that's probably one of the like coolest stages ever, and it's like um, you know everyone um, you know putting their effort together to solve a common goal, and it's really um, you know it really speaks to me. It's it's really special. So that's probably one of the um, you know in the if they if it's a category i would say it'd be you know under or for best stage ever type thing um so sorry that's that's all we got to talk about for a wind on one i know it's kind of brief but we need to move on to elite beat agents um with elite beat agents again they had a lot of american songs which um probably with a wind on one i don't um I don't know when and where because again I am not living in Japan. Um, I don't know when a song becomes stale, so that maybe could be the the same thing with a wind on one. They could have used a lot of songs that were, you know, either stale or you know, um, everybody you know kind of agreed on. Um, so same thing with uh, our continuing to elite beat agents. Um, they have a lot of songs that you probably heard before. Such as the case with um, Skater Boy for the uh, Taxi Driver level um, by Avril Lavigne. Um, the uh, the YMCA for the uh, Sea Captain level by the Village People. Um, September by Earth, Wind, and Fire for the uh, weather forecast uh, weather forecaster, and um, the. And let's uh, let's dance again. I'm I'm bringing that up again from uh, David Bowie. So, oh, sorry. Um, let me close that one and bring up that one. So yeah, that's the taxi stage. Or sorry, that has a popped up. That's the taxi stage, and that's the one for makes no difference. Uh, makes no difference. I can't. Sorry, I think that's probably some forty one. If I'm not mistaken, it's a director. That's probably one of the. Uh, that's one of the solid stages. Um, the taxi driver with Skater Boy is probably one of the funniest because it's a taxi driver trying to get a, uh, pregnant woman to the hospital on, on time. Um, Magician for Rock This Town, that one's pretty solid. The Dog with, um, Highway Star by Deep Purple, that one's pretty solid. Um, I would say most stages and songs are pretty solid, especially the, probably the most, um, probably the most ridiculous scenario is probably the... Uh, baseball, cl uh, baseball player um, with the uh, anthem by Good Charlotte. That's probably one of the most funniest ones because the scenario is out so like outrageous. It's so ridiculous. It's um, it's a former baseball star or former ba a former baseball player that needs a uh, uh, um, strut his stuff again, as it were, to save a kid from a rock golem or a volcano volcanic golem or something like that it's probably one of the most ridiculous scenarios in the entire game besides some of the bonus stages the bonus stages songs are eh and that's another uh great thing about elite beat agents um sorry i, I should have mentioned that before yeah, and they improve the, the like i think the uh, you know not hit detection but the controls like tenfold for elite beat agents and they they gave you or you can lock three bonus songs which is um uh, you know, do you believe in Life After Love by Cher, uh, ABC by the Jackson 5, and Survivor by, gosh, I think Destiny's Child, right? And, um, but anyway, um, so yeah, most of the songs are solid. I would say the only scenarios, stages that I don't like so much are, um, probably the Sea Captain. The Sea Captain doesn't have too many too much stakes going for him same thing i think with the celebrities and um uh the celebrities for material girl by madonna so so yeah sea captain is with ymca by the village people and then you know like again it's like 
iffy at best but you know most of all the uh, stages and songs are great um Candy Heat by Jamiroquai is a bit, one with a ninja that's trying to break in um a I think a competitor's uh a competitor's um skyscraper to I think get their plans back or something like that for their top secret design and um that one's okay but again like I I don't like a design because it's I think it's funny that um um, with a wind on with the with again with melody and the festival cart right they have american tourists that look goofy with like uh, like deformed noses and all that and they kind of do the reverse here because it's american um the the ninja and his father they look the most ridiculous so i think they kind of flip that and i don't know if they do that in the same thing for a wind on too but um you know it's a it's a funny thing that I think they, uh, not to you know not to go too far not to but I think they just they make fun of that so, um super notable stages I would say is the sad stage for this one which is um, is this little girl named Lucy, and um it um it gets me um gets me super upset yeah every time no matter what, um. Uh, but, um, it's like, it's like Christmas Eve or about to be, you know, soon to be Christmas and Lucy and her mother, um, you know, um, see their fa see her father off and then the father doesn't return and, you know, we assume that, or, you know, the audience assumes that, you know, the father has died and he's passed away and, um, and then um, the mom knows or figures that you know unfortunately the father's probably passed away but you know Lucy doesn't know so the mother or they both try to set up Christmas and um, kind of some special happenings are happen around the house every now and then and I can, it's kind of similar to the stage from um, again from um, again a sad stage from a wind on one where again it's um a, a dead spirit is manipulating things in the real world but i think this has more emotional impact maybe it's because you know um you know i'm in america and this was an american song with um it's you're the inspiration by chicago but i i don't know i think it just it has more it has more going for it than the first one because again like the guy is already dead in the wind on one and this one the father was still alive at the start of the mission so um um so yeah this one has big emotional impact for me and um i i cry every time it pops up no matter what um <laughs> um kind of brings me the thing and um in in a wind on and uh and uh elite beat agents they will uh shout a wind on or help in elite beat agents and for both set or all three stage stages they don't do that they will say the um you know san ni each for a wind on but for elite beat agents they'll go are you ready three two one so uh, or i'm sorry i forgot in the wind on it's ikaze or you know ikazo and then san ni each so um so yeah uh for elite beat agents um uh lucy um that's a that's a great or you know that's a sad stage but it's also probably one of the best ones in the game um I would say again with September I when I was re-listening to it I didn't realize the tempo was sped up but I think that's one of the great stages from the game um and I think the taxi driver is probably one of the the better stages for the game because the scenario is so you know outlandish I think it's like he's driving on the side of a building like the flash or spider-man or something like that at one point so it's just really f funny so um the last two songs and um 
are uh, without a fight by Hoopa Stank. Or is that the right band? I I can't remember. Um, and it's uh, everyone that you helped previously. So it's a it's another like group effort type thing, and it's a great stage. And but then um, after that, the agents the the scenario is kind of more goofy than a you know more of a serious threat in a wind on one, because in a wind on one, the threat from the last stage is that it's a giant meteor that's gonna you know um, go into the earth or you know smash into the earth. So you know that's scary. The the one that's in a elite beat agents they make it more like outrageously goofy and i'm surprised that they didn't go opt for another um that they didn't opt for another serious thing in the end stage for a wind on two it's a serious again because it's kind of like a almost or not like almost a global warming type thing because i think it's like the earth or the moon doesn't move or the earth freezes over or something like that and that's what the um uh consequences from the a wind on two but um uh but anyway um for leap the agency the final ending song is jumping jack flash by the uh rolling stones and it's a great cover version it's probably uh one of my favorite covers of a famous song and it's probably up there with you know like a fallout voice version of beat it or um, I think Alien Ant Farms of Smooth Criminal. So it's 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 a uh, it's a high quality cover. It's, it's the tempo is sped up, but it's not like like unfortunate like too sped up. Like I think in the case of September with the weather forecaster. Um, but it's it's sped up or it's slightly the tempo is slightly um, sped up. Or oh, sorry, I. I got distracted and I didn't take, talk about the consequences in the final stage. The final stage, there's like these aliens called like Rhomboloids or whatever that detest song and dance and then they freeze the agents or the elite beat divas in stone and then uh, it's really magical and I kind of wish I put this as a bit um, donation now that I think about it, is that um, Lucy starts chanting, you know, E-B-A and then they kind of they kind of get out of their uh you know petrified state and they start dancing again so um again jumping jack flash it's a fantastic cover version of the song and it's such a fantastic stage but a wind on one and elite beat agents they have probably the again uh, uh elite beat agents is another like contender or not contender but like they'd be grouped under best stage ever type thing um because it's um the sound effects that you hit with the uh, stylus like um a, a window on one is that they're like they have like whistles and like um sleigh bells and that's it's the same thing with the uh, um elite beat agent too except it's um uh it's uh gosh i can't ex think of the words but are or, or uh, think of the sound but it's um but also uh, another sorry, sorry note. I'm getting distracted. Um, if you're doing well in both in all three games, they'll always have a in the least speed agents case. It'll be like a hey, and it's it's a great sound effect. Talking about great sound effects. Sorry, I'm going back to the baseball player for um uh for elite beat agents. Um, for the scenes that you do well, the baseball player says, uh, you know, you bet, kid. And that's another that's another great sound effect. But um, sorry, going back to Jumping Jack Flash, and um, again, Ready Steady Go. Um, those are such great like um, ending songs and stages. Like, I I swear, I don't like the um a wind on two ending stage because the song's kind of weird. The I kind of understand the you know stakes, but again, or the consequences. But again, it's just, it's. I think it's funny that probably with an um sorry um I guess you know I think about it um ending on a uh, um elite beat agents. Well, we're gonna go to Owen on two, but anyway, Owen on two I think has probably the worst like finale slash last song slash stage. Um, and now continuing on to Wind on two. 
Um, I swear, like, almost all their songs are great. Um, probably the worst one is probably, again, the ending one and the one before the ending one, kind of like Without a Fight by Hoopa Stank and then, then Jumping Jack Flash. They have the same, like, structure. Um, and, um, but then they have three bonus songs. The first bonus song is, um, a Monkey Magic. And I think they say it's by Orange Range. I don't know if Orange Range did the um, the cover version, but um, I think they they did a couple of intro songs for um, the anime series Bleach. Um, but yeah, sorry, I didn't have any pictures for um, for a Wind on Two, and that kind of upsets me. But at the same time, um, uh, you know, you know, that's I we can't cry over spilt images i guess or i don't know that's a weird saying um anyway um a one down two is you know um has um about the same or better control from elite beat agents um the song slash set list is amazing i swear again the the song i dislike the most probably is is either vista for the uh shoe salesman or uh our monkey magic the first bonus stage song but um but um, every other song, fantastic. Or and again, I I don't like the two last songs, but I, every other than that, you know, I think pretty much all songs of the game are pretty much you know, um, um, like almost perfect. Um, the first stage is a song uh, called Zin Rook uh, Zin, oh, gosh, um, Zin Ryoko uh, Shonen. And I think it translates to strong-headed or strong-willed boy. And it's by Tsukimi Switch, which is it's a great band. Um, uh, this time it centers on from another, the uh, one of the returning characters from Wind on One, the, uh, the student that was applying for college or, and, or high school. And this, this time he's like applying for a passport or visa to go to the United States. I don't remember the exact details again because I I haven't read like the translated version, but that's what um you know that's c kind of what we can um say from the um uh from the pictures that are included in each, each stage. So um, other than that, you know, um, it's it's a great stage. It's a gr it's a, a much better song to start things off because it has um. It, it it's a it's picks up more it's more energetic um it just it's you know it's it's a great song and um that's that starts the game off right um uh, i can't remember which how or how f where the stage direction go there's a song called uh julia and it's about um the stage is about um a guy that is cutting somebody's hair and there's a new there's a new guy in town his his competitor that does it a little bit better so he calls on the wind on for help that one's okay um but then um one of my other favorites is a is a graduation song by an older guy in japan and it's called okuru kotoba and it's this version is by flow or at least a cover band version of flow and it's great because um they, it was like a graduation song and it was like kind of slow like kind of like pomp and circumstance and then it goes very faster like it's like a uh like a punk ska song which flow kind of does in in japan but other than that um it's a great song the stage is about a kind of like down and out sumo wrestler and um uh He's trying to get back in the ring, I think, to win money for his kids or whatever. So it's it's a great stage. Um, uh, one of the other next stages is a song called Go My Way. I'm sorry, I don't know who it's by again. But um, the stage is about a former uh, wrestler that um, that's trying to keep the um, hot springs uh, like place where she's at running or something like that. I don't remember the full context. I'm sorry if I get anything wrong, but that's that's a fantastic stage. Um, Shown in the heart. Um, I think that's a later stage as well. Um, is a song by 
uh, homemade kazaku, and uh, the stage is about an old man. I'm cons I are not concerned, but I'm I'm confused about what the stage actually entails, because it sounds like he wants to start a theme park with oni and animals and sorry oni are like um are like traditional demons in japanese folklore they'll you'll you usually see them at new year's or something like that and um they're like red ogres with like like leopard loincloths with big clubs and scraggly hair it's weird um but anyway he, he um the old man wants to start a theme park or something like that i've I don't know the exact context of the stage, so um, uh, one of the next stages is a great cover version of a song called "Bang Bang Vacances," where you know, um, "Vacances" is um, uh, for French for vacation, and uh, the stage is all right. I, I, it's it's a it's like an older woman probably in her middle-aged woman who's um she's a trashy romance writer more or less and it's um it's it's probably one of the funniest stages i can say in the game um uh another great stage on the uh as a pop star is a or song called pop star by kin harai and it's a doctor who um uh, that wants to kind of get away from it all, but then once once he's away on vacation, he gets all get these requests from these townspeople to to a fix their fix their uh, husband's balding problem, uh, fix their um, uh, which is you know a be a like a hair a uh, hair doctor. Then the next part is like, um, gosh, um, like fix uh, this guy's horse. You know, be a veterinarian, and that's funny as well. And then the next one is fix this woman's microwave. So I think it's even funnier that um the the situation keeps on escalating. So that's a, that's a great um uh stage. Um. The uh, I want to talk about. I want to talk about the last two uh the last two bonus stages before we get to the. The main stage, which is probably the um, probably one of the best songs in the game, and probably one of the best scenarios slash stages for the game. It's really, it's it doesn't like I want to feel the same emotion that I did for um, the Lucy uh, little girl in the for the Christmas story. But um, we'll, sorry, we'll get to that because it's it's another sad stage. But I don't want to get to that yet. I want to talk about the bonus stages. Um, so again, the first bonus stage is Monkey Magic, and I probably dislike that one the most out of all the songs. And in in all the games, I pr I'm I'm sorry to be so harsh, but I feel like either it's Linda Linda or Monkey Magic. That's probably the the worst songs out of all the games. And I guess for Elite Beat Agents, I'd say it'd be Material Girl by Madonna. So, um, or or possibly ABC in Elite Beat Agents, but um, uh, the second stage is a such a great stage, um, and it's and I, and I think about it consistently when I when I watch it. It reminds me of one of my best friends, and uh, the stage in, the stage in question, is um, it's about some kids, and unfortunately, um uh the the kid in question he has a crush on the young girl and she's moving away unfortunately and so he takes all these pictures of her and then you know to compile like a scrapbook and that's a stage and um uh glamorous sky is a song by um uh, nana and i think it's the intro to that say the anime with the same name nana and i th and i think on the um um, on iTunes it says it's starring Mi uh, Mika Nakashima or Mika Nakash Nakashmi Nakashima or something like that. Sorry, I I don't know when and where to shorten names because like if I think with like names like Keisuke and Atsuko, you I you think I think you omit the U in the middle entirely. So 
in in saying um so it's a t s u k o and so you, i think you say otsko and so you pronounce it like o t s u k o um but again i think you you remove or you know you omit the u so you just say otsko and same thing with the word uh, the name Keisuke. it's uh, k i think it's like k e i s u k e and i think you don't say the u so uh, i think you just say Keisuke. so um uh uh glamorous sky is such a fantastic song and the, the, both the cover and um you know the cover is on par with the original it's great um uh okay thanks for stopping by shrimpy um th and uh yeah um thank you for you know staying it in as long as possible or, or staying for the stream as long as possible um the second the third and last bonus stage is um is uh is uh probably the um one of the uh, more ridiculous scenarios with up there with the trashy romance writer and the old man um it's a song called Samurai Blue by ZZ, and uh, the sage is about, it's this young, new, uh, like, newly merely married couple, and um, the guy says, you know, well, I'm going to meet you for dinner or whatever, but the message doesn't send exactly, so the client that the wind on is helping in that stage is the cell phone message itself. So it's it's very weird. It's the cell phone message is personified by like an old fisherman guy with like a like a super suit or unitard on. It's really confusing and weird. And he has the um the message on attached to a stick like a hobo, and that's what the stage is essentially um, helping the cell phone message get to the the woman's cell phone. So it, that's probably the one of the like outrageous scenarios in the game. Um, so the last stage I want to talk about is one of the main stages. It's probably one of the, um, best stages, you know, in all, um, all, one, um, in all three games. It rivals the sadness in, um, uh, uh, Lucy, the little girl stage in the late beat agents. And it's, um, it's really, um, it's really heartbreaking. And I, I wish I would, you know, uh, burst in the tears as much as I do for, you know, um, uh, Lucy's stage in Elite Beat Agents because, um, it's a really, it's a really sad stage. And, um, the song is, um, Believe by I. And, um, I think I saw one day, I think some commenter said she's like a Japanese Alicia Keys or something like that. But, um, but uh, the stage is um, set upon a young figure skater. Her name is Mana Sh Sh uh, Shiratori. And um, she's about to practice her figure skating when she sees her older sister there. Um, I think her older sister chastises her, her, chastises her for not practicing as much. And then... Um, and then um, Mana kind of, I think, you know, goes away. She, uh... and then um, that night, kind of almost, I've heard about this, I think, from Conan, where it's like a cliche of um, South Korea um, drama shows. But um, later that night, um, as her older sister is walking home, she goes to the crosswalk and um, she is killed by the oncoming truck and um and um you know it's it's absolutely upsetting um <laughs> sorry i i had a um slight tear so um um but um uh later the next day or you know um a couple of days after the funeral slash memorial service um uh, Mana, Mana is about to practice again, and her coach hands her her sister's uh, skates. 
So the whole stage is about helping uh, Miss Mana Shiratori to achieve her dream, or at least to you know pursue her sister's dream of skating in the Olympics, and that's what this stage is about. So it's a very it's a very special stage. It's a very um, uh, powerful stage. I and um, talking about both stages, or you know, reading about them, or you know, watching it. It's it's very powerful. It's very it's very moving, and um, and uh, and um, yeah, um, that's it's one of the best stages in the game. You know, I think across uh, the whole three games as well. Um, and um, you know. It's, uh, I, you know, I, I think it's, I, I haven't talked about these games in such a long time. Um, it's probably, um, all three games are probably, are, are some of my favorite, and, um, unfortunately I don't have a DS anymore, I can't, you know, I can't play video games anymore, right? but I, but again, I still love to listen to the music. I still love to, um, because it brings me back to that, um, you know, time or place, or I'm not, I don't want to associate, you know, the place with negative feelings or connotation, but I remember all the, I try to remember all the, the positive aspects of, you know, when that memory comes up. So, but I, I love these games. Um, unfortunately, you know, there hasn't been, like, a direct sequel or spiritual successor for them. And, um, I know Inus has been working on a couple games here and there. I think they made the, um, and I, I played that one as well, the, uh, the karaoke game for Xbox 360. Um, that game's alright, but again, it doesn't hold a candle to a wind on one and two in Elite Beat Agents, so, um, they were talking about releasing one for the Wii U, but for some reason they never did, and, um, unfortunately, um, so those are the only three games, um, there is, uh, the, the, like, you know, the internet-based, like, Flash game or whatever, um, you know, us based on the, those games, but unfortunately, too, it's it's good, but it doesn't have the same, like, you know, it doesn't, like, I'm glad that they made it, but at the same time, I wish, you know, that they would, um, that, you know, Inus would make another, you know, a Windon or Elite Beat Agents. So, um, that's all I can say on the subject. Um... I'm happy to talk about those games. Those games mean a lot to me. And, um, I think it's a perfect time to end it there. Um, I think, uh, good affirmation to, to say before we leave is, um, uh, I guess, I guess to say is maybe, um, you know, be nice to somebody. I'm even, you know, be nice to a uh, random stranger in a while because, um, uh, you know, either, um, compliment or congratulate your friends or compliment, compliment or congratulate a random stranger, you know, and I think that's good affirmation to go out on today. So, um, thank you for tuning in and, um, I'm your host, Reroll. Thank you for ju jumping in, joining in or whatever. And um, I'll catch you next time.